Oh, Dr. Ruiz, you recognize. Thank you, Chairman Beneshek and Ranking Member Brownlee for holding this hearing, and thank you to the panelists for your participation. Last Congress, I was proud uh, to come together with committee members in both chambers to streamline the VA's payment processing systems. As the VA implements this centralized processing and payment system for all VA fee basis care, we must ensure that the focus remain on the veterans, that inefficient reimbursement does not hamper veterans' access to services, make it harder for veterans to seek answers from the VA, or expose veterans to financial harm. In this vein, the VA must make certain that veterans are held harmless from any problems the agency has paying its bills, which are certainly no fault of our veterans. A Vietnam veteran in my district, a good friend of mine who has been approved to obtain 100% fee basis care for more than a decade, still reports frequent delays in VA payments to his providers. When unpaid by the VA, these bills go to collection agencies, which can damage the veteran's credit rating and expose the veteran to stressful harassment from collection agencies and to financial harm. So, Mr. Migliaccio, in the interest of preventing veterans from enduring similar struggles, what safeguards are in place to prevent veterans from incurring financial harm, poor credit ratings because of delayed VA reimbursements to fee basis care providers? Thanks. Uh, I'll start. Uh, we want to put some systems in place so it, it doesn't get to where the veteran is harmed at all. Okay. So we want to start from the front end, and that is in, in terms of developing a, a really a solid system. And I won't get into this now to, to take the time, but I'm going to focus on our people, and we're going to focus on business processes, and we, I want to look at technology also so we can prevent this from getting to a Okay, veteran. so in other words, you're going to prevent it by improving yes, sir. Your, re your reimbursements. However, you have hundreds, if not hundreds of thousands of veterans out there who already have poor credit ratings because of the VA's fault and no fault of their own. So what are you going to do about them? Well, I, I, I've looked at the, the issue, uh, and I've looked at uh, the, the information that we've provided back to your office. Uh, I don't know if it's the, the, uh, the extent of the, of the issue is there. It's not as severe as we, we think because our, our, our relationship is really with a provider. And if a provider... Time out, but, time out, yes, time out. When you say it's not as severe as you think, now, I know that you're thinking as an epidemiologist and you're looking at the big picture in a systemic wide, but for one veteran who has his credit rating is makes, makes it uh, a matter of whether he can pay rent or not, it is severe. Yes, sir. So for those veterans, whether it's 1, 2, 10, 20 who are barely making ends meet, if you're not paying their bills and they're getting poor credit ratings, they, they could be evicted and then you've just increased your homeless veteran problem. Right? Yep. So what mechanisms can you do to remedy that poor credit rating? Well, w one veteran being affected is one too many. Um, we've got some, uh, some situations in place right now. We will go on behalf and, and work with our veterans. If, if this situation arises, we will uh, w work with um, the providers that sent the bills so we can adjudicate those claims quickly and, 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 check, and check that out. We also uh, will write letters to credit agencies to clear up credit reports for, for our okay. veterans. Okay, so I, will, I would like you to commit to working with this one veteran so that we can use that as a case study and you can demonstrate what you can do not only for this veteran, for the other veterans. The other issue that I want to touch on is that I'm very concerned about what just transpired here. Mr. Cook said that there are millions, if not billions of dollars left unpaid and prior to that, you had said that there are no outstanding claims. So there is some serious discrepancies between what Mr. Cook said and what you're saying. So if you don't identify a problem, you're not even gonna to attempt to fix it. So if there are, and he can show you examples of, of late payments. So what are you going to commit to do to remedy and rectify this discrepancy? Well, I'll definitely work with Mr. Cook and uh, ask for the information that uh, he has uh, brought forward, uh, and, and we'll see how we can work. I, I did my, my research with the Veterans Health Administration to ensure that there were outstanding claims there. If there are, I'd like to take a look at them because we're going to fix that. Okay, I will follow up with you and Mr. Cook to make sure that these different examples 
uh, are, are handled in a timely fashion so that we can get an example and maybe build some trust with our new uh, um, administrator here uh, that he can demonstrate to us that things may change. So this is going to be a trust exercise between you and this committee. Thank you. Is that, is that okay? I'm on. Okay. I yield back my time.